Hey everybody, so you may have seen my how does a motorcycle engine work, how does a motorcycle gearbox work, um, there might even be some other bits and pieces in there, maybe I should make a playlist of this sort of stuff. But basically, I'm not really a car guy, but this is a car box, gearbox, internals, uh, and I thought I'd go through and explain how it works, because it's different to the way that a motorcycle engine works. Now if you've watched my how does a motorcycle gearbox video work, uh, you'll know that that uses dog clutches to select the gears. Well, cars don't do that, um, generally. I think very old ones did, uh, but basically they use synchro rings, which are these things here, that then grip onto the gear itself and help synchronise everything together, and I'll explain how that works. I'm not a mechanic, uh, I know a bit about engines and stuff for my own uses, but I've been told that I'm good at explaining things in a way that makes them easier to understand than a lot of people explain things, so I thought I'd explain how this works. Okay, so the simplest way I can think to explain this is if you look at this being the front sprockets and this being the rear sprockets on a push bike, okay, because most people know what I mean by that, uh, and imagine that the direct connection doesn't exist and you have a chain there instead, then you can understand how you know the size of this compared to the size of this will change the, uh, the speed of this one compared to this one. But what happens with these is all of the gears are constantly meshed together. But if they're not selected, as you can see, they don't actually grip each other. Okay, so first things first, input shaft. This is where your clutch is attached. You know, clutch, flywheel, engine, where the power's coming from, and it comes into the transmission through here. Now, because we're in neutral, it'll turn. And as you can see, it's gonna turn half the, gear, half the gears, but because none are selected, this shaft, the counter shaft, which is connected with this big ring and a differential onto here, that's what's going to your wheels. So engine comes in here, goes out to the wheels here. So that's power flow, and I will refer to power flow, and you, you'll understand. Okay, so let's start with the engine off and the car left in neutral like this. If you just start the engine, it will just start spinning the, uh, the input shaft and because it's in neutral, it won't actually go anywhere because nothing's selected on this one, which I'm going to call the output shaft, but it's also the counter shaft. But we'll say input output to make it easy for you to understand. Okay? So if you start in gear, as you know, the car will jump because it's being driven. See, that's actually being driven now. When the engine starts, the car jumps and normally stalls. That's why you have to depress your clutch because that will stop this from spinning if you're starting in first. Okay, so the engine's running, you're in neutral, input's turning, but the output isn't. So then you depress the clutch, which will stop this one from spinning, which allows you to select a gear. Now what you have here is these selector parts, I don't know on cars. To me, these would be like selector forks, they probably are selector forks, but there's like three of them stacked up, uh, and each one does a different thing. You've, I'm imagining, because I think this is first inside here, this big gear which you can't quite see, I think it's first, second, the next one in does third, fourth, this one can only go down one, so that's fifth, there's nothing out the front end, because you see this is, I think this is fifth, um, <laughs> this is what I worked out by looking at this, I can look at things and generally work them out. With your gear linkage, you're going to select this inner one, and you're going to clunk it down into first. So now, when you let your clutch out, and this starts spinning, the output will start spinning as I say, connects onto a big gear which is connected to the, uh, the drive shaft on the front uh, through the CV joints and then you know to the actual wheels. So driving along, driving along, driving along, now you want to select second. You can't just go through into second because this will be spinning at a certain speed and when, when you change gear you're changing the ratio that the output shaft spins at. So you need to take the pressure off of this so they're not got a lot of force behind them so when you change gear the synchro rings can help slow down the gears that then allow it to pop on. So, car's going along, going along, you pull the clutch in, you select out of first, and then as it's spinning, it'll grab its point. Come on. Second. So now we're in second. Then you want to go for third, so you'll pull the clutch in. That brings this first selector down, and then you can go up with the middle one, this one here, and that will put you into third, or fourth, I'm not sure which way around it is, but I'm guessing because of the up down up down motions that this will be third. Uh, then again, you know, you're going along, going along, pull the clutch in, 
into neutral basically and then into fourth like so to, so then again you want to go into fifth pull the clutch in bring that one forward then in going into fifth that moves this down which steps this this one has confused me a little bit because it comes out and yet to go in gear it has to go in so there may be some mechanism to push that in when this comes out I don't know because that is in gear and that is in neutral and this is fifth as far as I can tell so uh, that's an interesting one I'll have to work out why that's that way and you're driving along driving along and then you know you come down through the gears <laughs> through the gears you know click 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 that slows you down with your engine braking I have a video on engine braking explaining how that works and then we're uh, stationary in neutral, yeah? And you're like, okay, now I want to go into reverse. Right, I've taken the box and I've tilted it forward. So now you can see that the, the selectors, the three individual layers of selectors are down here. So you have that individually move front and backwards and that one only comes backwards. This is your reverse gear up here. Now, unlike the forward gears, the reverse gears don't have the synchro rings because you're not going from first, second, third, fourth, you know, forward, 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 forward. You're going stopped in neutral uh, clutch in to reverse so you don't need the synchro gears that's why if you don't depress your clutch properly or if your clutch isn't working properly when you put it into reverse it will go Aah! because what you're having happen is these pointed teeth which match up with pointed teeth on the actual reverse drive gear because they've got pointed teeth and I'm like this okay so when they get pushed together they go Ank! and then they fall in place if they're spinning still they'll go ting 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 on the end and they'll go and that's you know that's the crunch of reverse Okay, so we're in gear. Notice how when this one turns counterclockwise, this one turns that way. Yep. So counterclockwise gets me clockwise. Now, clutch in, and remember we're stationary, into reverse, do the same thing. Oh, sorry, get it out of gear. Uh, and now, anti clockwise is getting anti clockwise. Because that's your reverse gear. Okay, so power flow and how the gears work, as it were. So the power comes in through here in the input shaft, remember, and it will just be in this shaft if the if it's in neutral because this will spin and the rest of it won't. So your wheels aren't turning, but your engine is. Then you depress the clutch, select a gear, like a second. Uh, so what's happened here is the power's come in through here, and because we've now locked one of these gears to this shaft movement it means that it's transferring the power directly through here and then out there. So basically it's going to make like a square bottomed U every time. In, down through one and out. Now depending on the ratios between this size and this size is what gives you your different gears. Okay I've tilted it again so I hope you can see what we're going on here. Can you see this gear here and this gear here? If you notice this one spins faster than this one here. So they're actually all spinning their own speeds depending on what the ratio is between the two because this is always turning and these are fixed and these are loose on the shaft unless the synchro rings depressed and it locks together using the um, selector forks as I'm going to call them because that's what I call them on a bike. So they do actually move at a different speed the whole time and that's why you need that synchro ring. Now I'm going to have to refer to future me as to how a synchro ring works because I'm going to be taking this thing apart. Okay, so we're in the future so this is the gear uh, I don't know which gear it was, but it's a gear. Uh, and as you can see, this is tapered. This is the synchro ring, and they're, they're separate. Now, the synchro ring's got grooves on the inside and these lines with oil to get in there because you need lots of oil to get in between these. So, as it's running, this just, you know, just goes along. So, this is like the gear's not selected. So, this can all turn on the shaft. Nothing's interlocked. So, then what happens, you have the selected... I guess it's a selector drum rather than a selector fork. Of the fork. But basically, this pushes over... And as you can see, it's got teeth inside it. And as it pushes, it pushes on this, and with a bit of force, see how that grips? And that will then grab hold of the gear, and it will synchronise the speed of the, um, the two shafts and help the gears. And this is what actually holds the gear in, sort of in place over there. So that's, that's where the drive is. It's when these two interlock, like that, which is aided by that. So there you go. There's the synchro rings. I think that's basically it, isn't it? I mean, as I say, the power comes in. So that's like your uh, your front sprockets with your legs. It's on a push bike. This is directly connected rather than having a chain, which does complicate things a little bit when you're explaining because of the synchro stuff. 
But uh, this would be your rear sprocket going to your back wheel. It's it's really that simple. It's just in, through a gear, and out. And if it's not going through a gear, well then it's neutral or reverse. And it still it comes in, but it selects uh, this from the other side, so it gets you the opposite direction. This is how a front wheel drive works. Uh, front wheel engine, front wheel drive. You know, because the engine's here and it's going directly down to the uh, drive shaft below it. If this was a rear wheel drive, it would be mounted the other way and you'd, your input shaft would be here, your output shaft would be here and then you have this which is just the counter shaft and then it will come down through the input, the power flow this is, into the counter shaft and back up through the output shaft in a straight line because it's then going off to the rear wheels. That's why front wheel drive boxes are good because they're so compact because they literally overlap each other. So this, this everything that the car does goes through this little bit which, you know, I've got big hands, but it's, it's not particularly big or heavy. Well, it's heavy, but not like insanely heavy for the amount of metal and the stuff it has to do. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Check out my other videos I have. I have all sorts of things and stuff like this. And uh, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you next time. Also, check in the description for Spice 110 Metalworks. Uh, that's my Etsy store where I sell pieces of artwork made from car parts that uh, I turn into clocks and things that you can buy. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.